One looking a solve means knowing the entire solve during inspection, which means that once you start the solve, you will never have to pause and you'll know exactly what you're going to do next. This can be very difficult and has many steps to it, so today I'm going to be going through every single thing you have to know in order to one look 2x2 two two solves consistently. One looking a 2x2, two two, skill number 1, learn the EG method. Even on what looks like a pretty bad scramble, there's often a really easy way to make one face, and if you make that face, then you can just do one more algorithm and that solves it. That's the EG method. So the EG method is broken up into three subsets. The first one with a solved bottom is CLL, and this has 42 algorithms. Next is EG1, which has a bar on the bottom, and this has 43 algorithms. Next is EG2, which has no bar on the bottom, and this is 43 algorithms. If you add that up, that's 128, and that sounds very scary, but it's actually not. One looking at 2x2, two two, skill number 2, making efficient faces. Here I'll be making some faces on red, and you should be able to make it on any color. These will not be random examples, but I'll be showing you very specific tricks that will help you with making faces efficiently. First is when three pieces are solved and there's one on top, there's generally three quick ways to do this. One of them is like this. One of them is if you're facing this way. And the last one, if it's over here, you can do it like this. And then if the corner faces up, then you have to pair it up with either this one or this one. So you can pair these two up together like this and put it back in. Or you can pair it up with this one. For the rest of these cases, I'm assuming you have a bar here because typically you want to work with faces that already have a bar done. Now, that's not always going to happen, but it usually will. So these are the cases that are easy to break down. If you have two pieces diagonal from each other facing opposite directions, simply insert one like that and then insert the other. That is a lot of moves, but there's a really easy way to look at the last layer, and I'll talk about that later. Now, if the two pieces are like this, then you can insert one like that, just while canceling into inserting the other one. So that's only three moves. If one of the pieces faces up, check if it can quickly pair with this one, like that. And then you can insert them all together. Alternatively, for this same case, if you have to do U2 to pair them up, then instead that isn't the best way anymore. In that case, you can just insert this one a little bit, and then move this one on top of it and then insert it all the way. If two pieces on top are both up, you can just pair them up like this, and then insert. If you have one piece up and the next one is attached to it, such that the red is like on the opposite side of where this piece is, then there's two ways you can do this. You can either just insert this one in one move, and then insert this one in here, or what you can do is move this one in first, but attach this one in on its way. Now, if you have one facing up and this one's kind of like touching it, then what you can do is just split them up like this, and this reduces into a case I talked about earlier where they face opposite directions. Insert this one, insert this one. Now again, I said earlier as well, this is a lot of moves, but I'll show you how to take advantage of this case later. If one of the pieces is on the bottom already, but almost on its way in, does one more move, see if you can sit another piece on top of it to go in together. If you can't do that, maybe you can pair them up if this one was facing up already. And if you can't do either of those, then you can either insert this one followed by inserting this one, or you can sit this one on top of here to get a misoriented corner, which is another case that I'll talk about. And I'm going to talk about that right now. If you get a misoriented corner, then just move it over to the other side so that it replaces a solved corner already, and then this one will be solved, and then this one will be really quick to solve. Now, this is a lot of moves, but again, there's an easy way to take advantage of look ahead to the top layer for this case. If this one is in the bottom layer, but not about to be solved in one move, then what you just do is kind of solve the other one and see what happens to this one. So in this case, if it faces up here, you don't want to solve it like this. Instead, you want to move it diagonal from this unsolved corner. Then you can solve them together like this. Now for the same case, if the other corner on top was not oriented upwards, then you simply solve this one and see what happens to this one. So we can solve it like this. And then we have a misoriented corner case, which I just talked about. If it was like this instead, then we can just solve it into the back here and cancel into solving this one. I guarantee you I missed some cases because there's no way I can break down every face case on a 2x2. Two two. There's just too many of them. So you're going to have to figure out a lot of them by yourself as well. But those are most of the cases you can get if you are color neutral, which you should be. Which means at least one of the faces should break down into one of those cases or be one move away from being one of those cases. One looking at 2x2, two two, skill number 3, tracing the CLL case. So in this scramble, we'll be going through an example of how to look ahead to last layer. So here we have a yellow bar, red bar, blue bar, and you have to decide which one you're going to use to make the first layer. Typically, the bar cases will be the best ones. So you can figure it out yourself, or I'll just tell you the best one here is yellow. It's only three moves. This one is going to be R' to insert this, 
followed by inserting this corner, which is over here, into the back. So that, that'll be R prime U prime R. So it cancels a bit, and then you get R2 U prime R. So what you want to do now is figure out exactly what the last layer will look like. That's kind of hard if you've never done it before. So in this case, we're going to take it step by step and just figure out what the OLL is going to be. So we're only looking at white, which is our last layer color. And so this one, where is it going to go? You can pause the video if you want to try for yourself, but it's going to go R2 U prime R. So it's going to be here. Where's this one going to go? R2 U prime R. Where's this one going to go? R2 U prime R. Okay, we didn't look at the fourth one yet, but we can kind of stop here and make sure you remember where they all went because you may have forgotten. It's really easy to forget, but we have one here, one here, and one here. You should be able to deduce what OLL this is going to be by only three pieces of the OLL. So this is going to be the T OLL with the last one here facing up. So you can benefit from this even if you're using Ortega, you just make the face, go straight into OLL, and then you can recognize everything after that. So for this one, we're gonna step it up and go through a full one look solution. So this is gonna be a little bit harder. Uh, we have an orange bar, yellow bar, and blue bar. Some of these might be equally good solutions, but we wanna quickly pick one and stick to it because you wanna spend most of your time on CLL recognition, not on making your one face. So yellow looking here, this is not, not a nice pattern. Um, blue, I can quickly make this bar here. So blue is good enough, not gonna look at orange. So for blue, I'm gonna hold it from the back here. So the moves are L to make this bar, U prime, and then L2 to insert it all. So what you wanna do is kind of get an idea of what the orientations of all these pieces are going to be, which if your experience is not going to be that hard, but in the beginning, you will have to kind of trace through it. So if we quickly go through the OLL here, this one is going to be green on the back. This one is going to move here and then here. And then these two are just going to go down and then up. So we're gonna have greens here and greens here. So this is going to be the L O L L or bow tie. So it depends what pieces you use to recognize for this. And you could use different sets of pieces depending on which ones you've already traced. That would be the best way to do it. But if you only can recognize from three specific stickers, then that's also fine for one looking. It may take a little longer sometimes, but we're gonna use that because that's just a little bit simpler here. So essentially this is the OLL it's going to be from this angle. And the stickers that I say to look at for my CLL tutorial is this one, this one, and this one. So these are the three we're going to be looking for. So coming back to here, we just need to figure out what stickers end up in those locations. So this one, it's going to move here. So we have red over here. And this one is going to be the one that ends up over here because it's gonna move down and then back up. So we're gonna have red over here. So red, red so far. And then the last one is going to be this one, which is gonna move down and then up, which is orange over here. So we're gonna have red, red, orange. So at this point we could predict the AUF and stuff, but I'm just gonna go ahead with the solution now. So we have this bar here at the back for the bottom, and we have this case, and you just have to know how to do the rest based on your knowledge of EG. So I'm assuming you know how to do the EG method, which means from here, you would just do an algorithm and predict the AUF at the end. One looking at two by two, skill number four, predicting where pieces will go. Sometimes your faces will take five or six moves, and it's in those cases that you have to know special tricks to help you out because tracing through all those pieces in 15 seconds can be very, very challenging. So when I say predicting, I don't mean tracing pieces anymore, like when you follow it all the way through to its ending. I mean certain cases where you know exactly where pieces will end up. So I'll give a really simple example here, but then I'll go into some more complex examples that will really help you with making your faces. Here we have three with green, this one's facing up. So how we're gonna solve this is by pairing it up with this one and then inserting them both over here. So in this case, you don't want to actually trace through any of these pieces besides just one of them. This one is going to move here. That's all the tracing you have to do on the scramble. The reason is because R2 U prime R2 doesn't affect these pieces. R2 preserves them on the bottom and the next R2 brings them back up. So all you have to do is imagine this one goes over here and we have this one and we have this one and really that's enough to tell you exactly what CLL case this is going to be because you can recognize it from that. This is a T-O-L-L and we have white, white, orange. That's enough. Here I'll talk about the important cases I mentioned during first face that will really help you out. So here on red, we have a misoriented corner in the bottom face, and this is actually a really nice case to deal with. You move it over here and insert this. Four moves, but only two of the pieces move. Directly above it, there are two pieces that are not going to move. As you can see, they are still in the same locations. And then the other two are the ones that are going to move, but they move in a very predictable way. This one at the back, is going to just slide over as if it did a U move. So this is what it's gonna look like at the end. Now this piece over here is going to slide to the back, but using an R move like this, all right? So we have this one with orange going to be on the back, this one with orange going to be on top. 
All right, so here we have the case on blue. We have this one and this one. This is one, two, three, four, five moves. Although you do not have to trace through five moves. You only have to trace through a couple. So what you have to recognize about this one is that the other two pieces in the top layer that are not the blue pieces, these are not going to move, all right? Green, red, white, still here. And this one, orange, white, green, still there. So all you have to do is trace through one more piece because you only need three pieces at minimum to figure out what CLL case you have. So this one, as it gets inserted, moves this one up, this one moves it over, and then the rest of it is not going to touch this piece, which means that that is it for recognition. You have this one moving up to here, and the green here is gonna move here and then here. So all you have to trace is one more piece besides these two that don't move. So even though it's a five move solution, it's one of the easiest cases you can possibly get for making the first face. So just to take it to its end, this would be a soon case with green here, 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 and I can deduce that the last one must be up here. And then I recognize white, white, what is this one? It's going to be this one right here, which is yellow. So that is white, yellow, white. So EG Method tutorial and anti-CLL tutorial will be on screen now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.